Again, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. And as they say, the governor is in the building. Welcome to day number two of the great expo here at the Charleston Civic Center. Please welcome, give a hearty welcome to this year's president of the Contractors Association of West Virginia, Mr. Scott Pearson and the executive director of the Contractors Association of West Virginia, Mr. Mike Clouser. Nice round of applause, please. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Expo. My name is Mike Clouser, and on, and on behalf of the four sponsors of Expo, the Contractors Association of West Virginia, the West Virginia Utility Contractors Association, American Institute of Architects, West Virginia, and the West Virginia Society of Professional Engineers, and the 25 co-sponsors, we are glad to have you part of Expo. It's an exciting year this year. Uh, as you see, a lot of uh, expansion at the Charleston Civic Center and how appropriate for a contracting group to have construction going on. Uh, we are pleased today to, to talk a little bit and to have an announcement today about where we are and most importantly, where we're headed. At last year's Expo, a year ago, Governor Justice was our guest speaker. And for those of you who attended, you probably heard him say, We've got to do something to get out of the ditch we're in. My roads plan is the pathway to prosperity for West Virginia. We are talking about 48,000 jobs, good jobs instantly. Once we get started, it will open up our state to real progress. Tourism will explode. I am tired of being 50th and we want to do something about it right now. He also said we are better than that in West Virginia. The governor, as you know, proposed a number of bold issues uh, in his State of the State address last year, including highway funding, the Roads to Prosperity Bond Amendment, and other measures uh, to provide funding for infrastructure in the state. And the governor's comments last year is, we have to create immediate jobs in West Virginia, and we can do this by investing and in improving and completing our network of highways. I have to have your industry with me. I'm 100% in your camp, but I need your help. I want contractors, engineers, and architects to be here ever more, and we have to get everyone doing the right thing. And to fast forward to this year, uh, as I think as everyone knows, uh, the, the West Virginia legislature passed a record-setting highway funding bill. The voters went to the polls to ratified by a 73 to 24 percent, uh, the Roads to Prosperity Bond Amendment. Largely, in do, not largely, due to the leadership of our governor and his vision for a bold uh, program to invest in West Virginia. And today, uh, we are pleased and honored to have the governor of West Virginia to talk about where we are going forward with all the work that he has done, our West Virginia legislature has done, and what our industry has done to help promote and create jobs in West Virginia. My honor to introduce the governor of West Virginia, Mr. Jim Justice. Thank you, Mike. Appreciate you. Well, this is a nice crowd. Thank you all for having me. And uh, I'm going to sit here and just talk with you just a few minutes. And then I'm going to have the pleasure to sign something here that's really special. You know, a year has been a big difference. And I don't want to continue to rehash old ground. But, you know, we've got to learn from our history, and it's worthy. It's worthy to think about this just for a second. You know, 14 months ago, this great state, in a lot of ways, now I'm a business guy. And I've said this upteen, upteen times, and it seems to escape us. But it doesn't escape me. We were DOA at best. We were flat, bankrupt, and nowhere to turn. Now, 
not by the blessings of me, but by the blessings of the good Lord and some good ideas and a lot of people, things have really, really changed. Now, we have an opportunity. And today, can you just imagine, can you just imagine this? Based on the United States Department of Labor data, West Virginia had the highest percentage of new construction jobs in the United States during 2017. Now, when are we going to awaken to the fact that we've really got a movement going on in West Virginia? You know, I just went out and I flew in my airplane because I try as best I can to not use any state monies in any way, shape, form, or fashion. You know, we've been through all that before. But I flew to San Diego on Sunday morning. I didn't really anticipate a headwind that we would fly for 50 million hours to get there. And then I thought I was going to get there and be able to go to a hotel or something like that and take time to change clothes. And we only had enough time for me to run in the bathroom at the, at the hangar and change in the hangar and get to the game. One of the things I was going to say in an interview with CBS was just this. And the interview was so short I didn't get the opportunity to say it. But again, it's meaningful to me. I was going to say, in West Virginia, maybe unlike the Marines, we're not looking for a few people. We're looking for a lot of people. We're looking for a lot of good women and good men to come to our state, and this is what they'll find. They'll find a good job, a good paying job. And they'll be able to raise their family in paradise. Four of the most beautiful seasons on the planet. Good people. People that care and people that appreciate and people that love. You see, we need to promote us every day. And we need to promote the goodness of what we're doing here. We need to promote the fact that we're growing at almost a 5% growth rate. And we just gave every state employee a 5% raise. I think that's good stuff. And I think it's good stuff that we dedicated, we put an emphasis on investing in education. Now, I've got another thing here to do. And somebody's got to help me with this stuff. I've got too many hands going in too many different directions. But this, this is the bill. This is a bill that we just passed to enable us to bond monies to upgrade our state parks. This bill right here will create I don't know how many of hundreds of more jobs. This bill is 55 million, which really gives us the ability to bond 80 million. But we only think we only need $55 million to upgrade our state parks. And I'm going to sign that right now. I'm going to sign it right here, right now. Somebody's got to help just a little bit. If you'll told that. Not every day do we have a senator this kind. Okay, here we go on the first one. All right. I should have four copies. But now just think about this. Tourism. Tourism is on its way. Now, a lot of people would say, well, the governor wanted more money to go into tourism. And what we did was just that. Now, to get in balance, 
My 58 million that I added to the table that I'm entitled to do on my revenue raise, we said, well, we'll put that aside, and if it doesn't come, we'll get ourselves in balance and we'll cut commerce and tourism and what we ever all we had to do. But I'm telling you, the money will be there. I absolutely believe it with all my soul, and we'll be able to fund tourism and everything. Now, I've got three pins here, and I'm going to let you dispense them to whomever you I'm choose. <laughs> no, I'm, I want to give them to somebody. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, they're going to be hoggish down here. Okay, now this young lady, Butch, Butch, have you still got one of those pins? This young lady right here wanted one of those, and she deserves it. Thank you. <laughs> bless you, bless you. Thank you. Now, think about this just for a second. I got to have my sheet back. Where's, did my sheet leave me? Okay. Just think about this just for a second, and then I'll take your questions or whatever you might want to do. Today at 2 o'clock, I've met with Chelsea Ruby. She showed me the new ad campaign on tourism. Now, let me just tell you this. There's not many things I know in this world, but my MBA, my specialization in, in my MBA was marketing advertising. And it needed a few little tweaks. And they're coming back today at 2 o'clock. And we're right on the verge of releasing something on tourism that will drive up teen, up teen more jobs to us. There's all kinds of things happening within West Virginia, but now just think, 14.4% growth, 4,300 new construction jobs in 2017, and our roads haven't even kicked in, have they? I mean, we're just on the springboard and we're ready to launch into the pool with the god awfulest cannonball you've ever seen in your life. Now, think about this for a second. I ran on a theme that was said, tired of being 50th. I ran on that. I was elected on that. We don't need to forget that. In October of 2015, in this category here, we were dead last. Dead last. We've gone from dead last to first. I mean, for crying out loud, that's some neat stuff in my book. Now, I got to see if I got anything else to tell you over here. I, uh, fingers won't work real good. I've got this to tell you that these jobs all across West Virginia, Mike says, are being driven from the oil and gas industry, uh, uh, you know, on pipeline projects, from coal mining jobs, commercial and residential development, manufacturing and highways. It just goes on and on and on. But you know why in so many ways things are happening? It's because all of a sudden we're awakening a sleeping giant like you can't imagine that the world out there is beginning to look at us and say, oh, West Virginia is not that dark and dingy and backward state. West Virginia is really special. Did you know about West Virginia? And all of a sudden, our hope is rising, and there's a lot of things that are really happening. Now, I've told you about the excess lottery money that's enabling us to bond. I've told you about tourism. Uh, I've told you about all the good stuff we're doing with the parks, and Steve McDaniel's doing a fabulous job at the DNR, and... Uh, not only is he bringing his elk, we're going to have a quail program, but not only that, we're going to absolutely d develop our parks and, and do all kinds of stuff that's going to drive a lot of people to West Virginia. What better place could there possibly be than West Virginia 
you know, when you're within ro a rock's throw of two-thirds of the population of the country, to come and enjoy all that we have here. And Steve's doing a wonderful job in regard to that. We, we, we did, we, Chelsea was sitting in my office, and I said, Chelsea, I'm not happy with the pictures in your uh, ad program. And she said, well, Governor, we're going to have some photographers do some photography in the spring. And I said, Chelsea, we've got the pictures. We've got the pictures right here in our state right now. So I'll tell you what let's do. Let's have a contest because the pictures are here. You have the pictures. You have the pictures, and let's have a contest. In the first 24 hours, it, it shut down all the website and everything else under the sun, collapsed everything. We had 1,600 pictures come in in the first 24 hours. So a lot of West Virginians want to show off West Virginia, and that's good stuff. Now, I'll take any of your questions. I'm done. Yes, ma'am. Hey, Andy. I didn't see you. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. Now, Andy, I, I'm not sure exactly your question. Your question is sprucing up the exit. I don't know why we can't get that. I mean, because there's lots of ways to go to New River. Sam Black is surely one of them. And you could go right through, New, right through uh, Rain Ale and on down that way. So, yeah. Tom Smith, wherever he is, will get you a sign. <laughs> uh, you'll get a big one. Yes, sir. Okay, now somebody's got to help me with this. As far as the RISE program, as far as when's it, when it's going to kick off, do you know that, Butch? Did you get that? Right. Sure. Well, I, I, I do know this, that from the standpoint of additional housing and those that lost their homes and everything else, we're work, we're new homes. We're working on that as diligently as we possibly can, but the number of applicants on that is shrinking, and it's shrinking substantially. But uh, I do know that much about the program. Help me again, Butch. Snap. That's all I can give you right now because my people have not reported back to me all the specifics and everything, and, and all I can tell you is the bill they just said is coming down to me today. I haven't seen the bill yet. The education and the arts bill, let me just tell you where I, where I am on that. Where I am on that is just this. First of all, if there is redundancy that we can truly save dollars within West Virginia, then I need to sign the bill. There is a real hang-up that I have, and it's just this. If I sign the bill, I've got to have the ability to create a secretary of the arts because our arts need to grow in West Virginia. We do not need to restrict in West Virginia. And the other part that is mandatory is we've got to be able to have a seamless, seamless transfer 
that none of our programs, none of our funding, nobody, whether it be the sick or the elderly or whatever, will be hurt. So we've got to be seamless in the transfer. We've got to save money, and that may warrant my signature, provided, provided if I can find a way to have a secretary for the arts. Anybody else? Gosh, this is pretty easy. Yeah, Andy. <laughs> Andy, I love you to death, but I don't know that I can promise you to be number one on the list. But I will promise you that you'll be surely considered to, you know, because I love you. Okay, listen. Uh, yes, I'm sorry. Hey, Brad. Well, I, I, I do. You know, first of all, I know he draws a lot of criticism. And really and truly, at the end of the day, you know, President Trump is probably more boisterous than I. And there's times when I can be pretty bo boisterous, but, but I love him. And I know how much he cares about West Virginia. You know, he has got, we've got to give him his due. He's got to know so much more about the situations as far as trade imbalances, as far as these nations taking advantage of the United States and all the different things he's doing We've got to at least acknowledge and give him his due that we really don't have that knowledge. So I am a real proponent. I think he's doing a wonderful job, and, uh, and he's a good friend, and I know his heart, and I know his heart really, he really, really, genuinely, beyond me, beyond me, he really cares about West Virginia. Okay, thank you guys. Governor, thank you. Thank you for your leadership in building a better West Virginia. Uh, the men and women that are part of the construction industry, the design industry, are ready to go to work to, to build a, a better West Virginia. We thank you for being here today. Expo will be till noon today. Please, uh, please uh, visit our exhibitors. Uh, buy a lot. It makes our exhibitors happy. So thank you all for coming. Uh, this concludes uh, this morning's program. Thank you.